so we have received uh, very interesting questions i will uh, when i read it out i will rather not uh, you know read the name of who submitted it but you know i will say the how long the you know seeker has been with problems <coughs> and also the question so the first question so this is from a seeker who is new who is with us for the last three months the question is um, from Atlantic Canada. My mother passed away seven months back. She comes and talks to me during my dreams. During the last few weeks of her lifetime, I was very firm and rude with her that it fills me with a lot of guilt. I should have been very caring for her when you know I was with her. Now I am thinking all those days when she was very caring and all the sacrifices she did. I want to be with her more. How can heartfulness help me with this? Raji has answered this several times before. Normally, the soul's path after it leaves the body is to progress forward. And uh, any intervention normally from other end in terms of thinking about the soul or craving for the soul to come back can force a hindrance. I remember that uh, when my mother passed away way back in 1996, and of course for everyone, mother is very special. Charlie Mother is very beautifully explained, saying that the mother that was the soul which took the body has to now be allowed to go. So do not hold back by your emotions or feelings because it might prove counterproductive. He also said that the soul is extremely happy when it leaves the body because it came for a purpose of using the body for some revolutionary reasons. It might have fully achieved or partly achieved. And uh, once the soul leaves the body, there are higher uh, elements which guide the soul further based on the level of consciousness the soul has achieved at the time of death. So it is best that whenever uh, the sex seeker gets the memory of his mother is to make a heartfelt prayer and connect the soul to the heart of the master and the that will produce tremendous results and it will also be it's like imagine you are boarding a bus and you know why you are boarding a bus because you are going from one destination to another before boarding the bus you have spent time with your friends or relatives or someone and they don't want you to go as the bus is about to leave or after the bus leaves if the person comes and starts pulling you back how do you feel? My purpose of taking this body over, which means the visit I have made to a specific person's place one week, one month, one year is over. Now I'm moving to the next destination. However hard it might uh, sound, for the benefit of the soul, whenever such memories come or whenever such dreams come, sit with a prayerful attitude and uh, place whatever is happening in front of the master and let him guide further the souls on the soul's journey. Thank you. Hey, is it okay if you can keep the mic a little closer so that they little muffled the voices? So, yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah, this is great. The next question, this is also coming from Atlantic Canada. The seeker has been with us for three months. The question is this, I have been following Sadhguru for three years. I practice Isha Yoga. I got recently introduced to heartfulness and have got great experiences. 
I seem to recall having similar experiences with Isha Yoga during the early days. But my only challenge these days is that I eat non-vegetarian, but they are very strict that I should be a vegetarian. Hence, I am not able to get 100% benefit. But I don't want to also lose touch with Isha Yoga. Am I allowed to follow both Isha Kriyas and Heartfulness Meditation? See, this is finally based on uh, what we would call as uh, the goal of the seeker. What does the seeker actually seek? Where has he or she chosen a specific path? For example, I want to do post-graduation in chemistry. And I am in the plus two or the 11th and 12th standard stream, undergrad or whatever you want to call it in Canada. The pure science stream, they'll teach you physics, chemistry, math, all that. But once I pass that undergrad, I move on to my specialty. I have to be aligned to the goal of studying chemistry further so that I'm better prepared for post-graduation. Whether it is the religious practices or the various uh, sansthas that we come across gives us a set of exposure, what we call as vidya or knowledge. In heartfulness, we always say that the ultimate is supposed to be Brahma Vidya. Brahma Vidya is the Vidya or the knowledge that will help you to move towards the highest possible goal that is possible for a human in this life's evolution, in one single evolution of life. If I cross plus two and then take up chemistry, it doesn't mean I'm deserting my physics and maths and English teachers. I have understood that they have served a specific purpose of preparing me for the higher grades. A time will come that every teacher fulfills the duties and then we have to move to the next level of teacher. When I move to the fifth standard, doesn't mean I'm upset with my first, second, third and fourth grade teachers, except that I understand that what I need to read and study in fifth cannot be offered by my teacher who helped me guide through one, two, three and fourth standards. If the goal is clear, if you refer to maxim three of ten maxims of heartfulness, Bhavji Maharaj very clearly says that to fix your goal as the highest, which is complete oneness with God. If that is the goal, then you have to evaluate if the tools that you have in hand are going to help you to move towards that goal in this lifetime. Does it have pranahuti, which is like a force multiplier in our journey towards the highest goal? Does it have the process of the cleaning, which helps you clear the emotional impact of the events that take place throughout the day, which, if left unattended, can become impediments in my progress towards my goal? Connecting back to the other question that the seeker asked, is non-vegetarian good or bad? It is up to us to decide. If I am boarding a flight, and if the flight uh, captain tells me that I am only allowed a hand baggage and I can't have a check-in baggage, and in the hand baggage I am allowed only 3 kilos, whereas I have about 8 kilos already in my hand baggage, he tells me, make a choice which you would like to keep with you for you to board this flight. I can decide what the combination of those three kilos can be. If you look at uh, the Vedic studies or the Ayurvedic studies of food, Rajas, Tamas, Sattvic, all this kind of feelings that are generated inside of us, is directly attributed to a great extent to the food intake. Put that food intake that a person is taking, keep them aligned to the highest level of goal. Does it 
help them to build more and more of sattvic tendencies which helps you to move towards the goal faster there are many people even in uh, dietary restriction they have a cheat day once in a while you do eat something just to satisfy your taste the heart will always guide and the body is a very good indicator if whether it is food the books that i read the channels that i watch the friends with whom i spend time the outings that i take to the mall or anywhere else if i am very very clear let me compare it with a corporate goal if you're in your office you have your kras kpis whatever and those measures help you to progress in the organization faster in terms of promotions increments and all that if one of your habit is see for me food is a habit exercise is a habit breathing is a habit meditation is a habit does my habit help me move towards my goal faster in the corporate life and whatever works in corporate life if you just bring the spiritual aspect into that and find if the habits that you have will make it easier for you to reach the goal faster or not the beauty of heartfulness system uh, to the seeker who asked the question in india we always say the the best way to handle theft is to give the key to the thief so that the thief decides whether to steal or not likewise our system is such that the tools are given to you in like a buffet in front of you you have to decide what to choose you have to decide what to leave behind in your own progress it is not to say that people who eat non veg will not progress or people who eat vegetarian progress i don't think that kind of interpretation is meant anywhere but the idea is to make the conditions that are given even in the satsang that we group meditation that we had prior to this question and answer session there are several conditions which are given in a very very subtle way let us say that you are having food and you are if for example you compare the life of a tea taster a person who is in the life uh, one of my friend happens to be a tea taster he says that i can't eat anything else prakash because the moment my tongue gets neutralized with any other taste i can't give the exact result for what the tea should stand for likewise the conditions that are bestowed upon us during such meditations group individual one on one whatever for us to enjoy the taste or the conditions given for us to build on it further we have to decide what are the impediments in fact daji goes on to say that it is not the food which is an impediment but to a great extent our thought itself and hence he says the thought pollution is one of the biggest challenge that we need to handle so the seeker has to decide what the goal that he or she wants to achieve in this life whether the habits that they are choosing in this path is conducive whether they want to stick to a guru of a higher caliber after testing them or they want to ride a two boat fortunately or unfortunately thanks to the concept of free will which is quite prevalent in the western world the choice is given to us we make the choice and we enjoy or suffer the consequences thank you the next question this is from a seeker from west of toronto um, you know she has been with us for 5 years the question is there are times i receive transmission in point 2 and other times i feel that the transmission is flowing into point 3 does that mean i am in point 3 now in my journey that uh, normally it's better to speak from one's own personal experience now if you can hold the mic please. what Thank i have understood in my journey i have been practicing heartfulness meditation since 
the first one or two years, I was pretty curious about the progress that I was making. And once Charij Maharaj made a beautiful joke, he said, whether you are in the front row of the flight or in the rear end of the flight, it goes to the same destination. So why do you bother where you are seated? So the idea really is to focus on the process of what we are doing and not to worry about what happens. Personally speaking, if you have read the whispers, we all know that the medium was uh, elevated to the level of 0.13 during her lifetime. Yet, she herself writes that she has been told by Babu Maharaj that she has to take one more birth because she has some other work which is pending. So what does it mean whether you are in two or three? I mean, if you cross five and move on to the mind region, if you have attained liberation, technically you are not going to come back. But in her case, the nature has decided that she has to take one more birth. Because as you progress spiritually, we are no more personally bothered about our own consciousness evolution. Now I have come to a situation where I am supposed to inspire the masses, pass on the benefits. The candle doesn't burn for its own benefit, but to pass on the light to the next candle before it passes out. Many years back, I had shared this in one of my talks in the recent Bandara. We were all sitting in Manapakam. And Charji Maharaj was jokingly say that I want to come back. Something like that. So for a second, I was really shocked. I mean, what is the point in practicing so much and all that? I want to come back. And then he said something beautifully. I said, I am giving so much. He didn't say I. He said, the masters are giving us so much. Do you think he is going to just let 50, 100 people go and sit up there when the world below is suffering so much? The, the world needs the system. The other question in terms of where the transmission is flowing, normally the transmission is always aimed at the heart region. Unless on a very, very, very specific case, the master decides to do some work. The flow of transmission is always, it's like when you take a deep breath, which part of the nose does the air enter from unless you close one nozzle? Likewise, when you are meditating, the transmission is normally taken complete in the heart region and then it sort of reaches out to the entire system through the heart. The heart is where even the central region resides, is what Bab Maharaj says when he refers to the esoteric symbol in the whispers. Normally, instead of I used to make fun with my wife when we used to go to the restaurant, I'll be enjoying the food, whereas she'll be saying that most probably this dish is made like this. They would have added this ingredient, they would have made like that, and things like that. So many times I used to tell her that just enjoy the food. How does it matter how that person is made? Does it really make a difference? So I would suggest that, uh, in fact, two weeks back when Daji was giving a talk, he said that a time will come when even conditions become irrelevant. Conditions are only given to such an extent that you understand that there is something called as a condition and then you transcend that as well. Last week in one of the talks in Tamil Nadu, he was speaking about where religion and spirituality begins, where spirituality and uh, bliss begins, reality begins, where reality and bliss begins, where bliss ends and then it goes on, something like that. All these in my view are transitory, write it in a diary, move on. Enjoy the sitting while it lasts. Use the principles of AEIOU to build on the condition that is given to you so that the fragrance doesn't stay with you alone, but passes on to wherever you go. Thank you. Thank you. So for those you know who are here, if you think that the question resonated with you or even the seeker who has submitted the question, if any of you feel like adding anything more as a question, please feel free to like it need not be just like between me and uh, the Prakash. It's just for all of us. Okay, so moving to the next one. So this is coming from a seeker who lives 17 hours north of Toronto. 
uh, my spouse, so she has been practicing for the last two years. My spouse is going through stage four cancer and Vishwa has been helping with care settings. We all are mentally preparing ourselves for his passing. Doctors have said few months to an year at the most. My heart sinks in pain thinking that why he is having to leave so early. He is such a good person. He is only in his 50s now. I feel anxious if he cannot do something to all to get all these fixed. My prayers uh, for the person who is going through that condition because it's not easy. During pandemic, I lost a couple of very close relatives of mine. Some of my schoolmates with whom we even have a WhatsApp group those days that one year was very painful to watch at least four or five of them passing on where the photograph and the person's name was flashed in the group. See, death, when Charigi Maharaj was mentioning about this, is there a right time or right age to die? We don't really know. I remember a, a BRC many, many years back, was about 75 then, way back in the mid-90s, used to call Charigi Maharaj once a year during his birthday. And he used to ask him that I want to live another 50, 100 years. Once Charigi Maharaj caught him on the phone and said, let's assume that I'm going to give you another 50 to 60 years to live, which means you live on up to the age of 140, 150. Do you know what will happen? Your sons or children would have died, your grandchildren would have died, your great-grandchildren would have died. Is it really worthwhile for you to watch everyone dying when you're still going to live? So human always look at mortality or immortality as a as a dream. Death has a reason. We still cannot lose hope as long as the person has life. I have personally seen stage 3 and stage 4 coming back remarkably well thanks to medicine, thanks to prayers, thanks to whatever all of us can do. We all chip in and see what best can be done. But yet, the soul in Sanskrit, it's called Prarabdha Karma, a set of samskaras the soul comes down with so that they can work it out and then move on to decide what happens in the next cycle of birth, death or whatever. While they are here, I, I understand the pain because I lost both my father and mother at a very young age. My young age and father my young age as well. I always used to think that they died too young. And as we realize, as we grow older, this question always perplexes me. What is the right age to die? When will enough be enough? We really don't know. Though these are all philosophical questions. For me, if the person who is going through that can be guided to deepen their practice in heartiness meditation if they're already a practitioner. That would help elevate the soul to its highest level of consciousness for which it would have taken birth here. At a human level, if we are not doctors, the best that we can do is to work for the soul's highest level of progress while it is embodied in this uh, form that it has taken. My praise once again, let's hope that care settings and the benevolence of the master and the medical advancements will help this person somehow. I really feel sorry for them. My praise. So the next question, this is coming from a seeker. We'll have time for two more questions, I think. We should. So we have yes. Seven minutes, so. yes. The next question is coming from a seeker who lives in Ajax, which is uh, east of Toronto. The seeker has been with us for five months. The question is, my daughter is eight years old. She's very spiritual. And whenever I take sittings 
or whenever I meditate, she is very interested to also join me in meditation and she wants to learn more. Whenever I take sittings and satsangs, can she also please join me? The way we all have an educational system, you have those uh, super geniuses who pass out at least six, seven years earlier than the normal educational system. For example, I know of people who are capable of cracking answers to questions which even people in PG cannot solve in mathematics. The way we have a bodily maturity that is needed for us to grow into life. How much ever somebody is interested, there is an age for a noting system. There is an age for us to settle into married life. There is an age for certain things. Daji has once beautifully said, Childhood is a time when they need to enjoy and grow into adulthood on their own. Why hurry the process? Normally what tends to happen is it hastens the mental maturity and spiritual maturity pretty fast. And sometimes we don't like to overcook something because then it won't become palatable when you eat. The age between 5 and 15 is a time when we should give them to enjoy their innocence. We should give them the space for them to slowly take things that are coming. There's no need to rush because from the time they start meditation till the end of their life or whenever they choose not to continue the practice, it should not become a burden to them that why did my parents choose me to start so early? In fact, many of these questions have been beautifully answered by Daji in the book, Wisdom Bridge. Maybe if the seeker can get hold of a copy, some more detailed answers can be found in that book. For want of time, since we have time only for one more question, I'll pause here. Now we have another email from Sharda. But we only have three minutes. Do you think we should probably... We'll take it. We'll take one question first. Uh, this is from a seeker in Scarborough. Um, seeker has been with us for five minutes, five months. I have been doing Sudarshana Kriyas for the last three years with under the guidance of uh, Shri Shri Ravi Shankar, uh, but not so regular. I always thought that Shri Shri's path is the best way for ultimate emancipation. I have been introduced to heartfulness through my colleague. I find this great. What is the difference between Shri Shri Ravi Shankar's path, Kriya Yoga and Heartfulness? Which is better? Do I have to do both to get the maximum value? I mean, this question, I think, really resonates with the first question that I answered with someone who was practicing Isha Yoga and they asked almost a similar question. Say, I always have this fanciful comparison that my mother is the best in the world. I am sure that everybody on the screen will say that their mother is the best. It is for you to decide what helps you move towards the goal. When you say the highest goal, do they have the tools and techniques? Are there the methods uh, to take you towards the goal faster? See, it is for the seeker, thanks to the free will and our ability to judge, discriminate what is really good for us. Can we go ahead and judge as to which path is the best for us. It's up to us to decide. I personally would say that if you are stepped into heartfulness, practice as if in the next 90 days that there is nothing else that you want to do. In these 90 days, give it the best in terms of how the practice has to be done. Right from the time you get up in the morning, right from point B cleaning, if it is not already shared with you, maybe the volunteers, trainers will share it with you later. Right from the time you start in the morning, when you get up before sunrise, do the point be cleaning, followed by the meditation, and then having the four prayerful suggestions and the full intentions as part of your daily activity. And whenever you have issues through the day doing spot cleaning, in the evening at the end of the day's activity, 
doing an entrance cleaning the, the way we take bath after the workout and then around 9 o'clock doing the 9 p.m. universal prayer for the world to benefit not only the way I have benefited let everyone to benefit from this. After the 9 p.m. universal prayer doing your point A meditation for about 5 to 10 minutes and before going to bed practice maximum 10 to ensure that any guilt that you have is submitted at the feet of the Lord and that you sort of ensure that you don't repeat it the next day. And with a prayerful attitude, go to bed with after offering a bedtime prayer. Follow this heartfully for 90 days and see whether it gives you the kind of speed that you are looking at moving towards the goal. During these 90 days, feel free to practice anything else that you want or only practice this if you want. I have seen people are doing Zumba temporarily for 90 days, they'll pause other kind of activities. If I'm going to yoga, I'll pause something else. I'm going to swimming, I'll pause something else. It's up to you. 90 days give happiness practice a real shot. Everything as per the book, as they say, dotting the I's and crossing the T's. At the end of 90 days, take a call with your trainer talk to them, find out if it is beneficial and then please decide what suits you the best and then decide accordingly to continue with whichever system is right for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anna. We are at 9.01. It was very insightful. We still have a lot of questions. Maybe I'll connect with you to see if you have time for one more session to come back to us in one of the... We'll do that, surely. Okay. Thank you so much and thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Brother. Thank you, brother.